Welcome to this week's EMBN show and on a packed show, a packed show, we'll be looking at some of the latest e-mountain bikes from 2020. So let's begin this week's show by calling the Somerset sweatshop the man himself, Chris Smith. Steve Jones, how are you doing? It's not quite sweaty down here today, actually. It's uh, hammering down in Somerset today. How about there in uh, sunny Wales? Yes, I've retreated to the house. It's uh, a bit of a wet old day, but you know what? I'm really looking forward to a bit of a, a recap of the hottest new e-mountain bikes of 2020. It just so happens that actually it has been about 20 come out uh, in the first six months of the year. Really nice. Do you think we should go through it alphabetically or randomly? Yeah, no, keep it alphabetically, I think. You know, keep those bikes in order. What are we, uh, what are we gonna kick off with then? Well, let's kick off then with the BH Atom, the strictly limited edition bike. Um, 8,500 pounds, you know, not exactly uh, inexpensive. I'm not sure about the looks of this bike. Chris, what do you reckon, hot or not? It's a bit Marmite, that one. I think you either fall in love or, um, yeah, I don't know. I think not for me, that one. How about you? Ooh, crikey. Well, let, let's move on to, let's move on to the the bull's copperhead now this is a 150 mil travel bike uh, and it's got a blue brake anti-locking uh, system on it like an abs on an e-bike i mean that's pretty innovative right yeah i don't know I've, I've seen a bit about this i know migura were working on it for their bikes but abs do you really need it i think that's going to take the fun out of skidding and drifting around the corners for me i don't know what are you thinking well i don't actually like abs on cars because or, or because when you when you get into the sort of into like a, a muddy ditch or something. You, the, the brakes don't work, do they? So it's a bit unnerving, I think. Or a wild boar, a sheep runs out in front. It's no good, is it? Yeah. Now, last year we had a look at the uh, all new Cannondale Motera. Now Cannondale have come out with a new Motera, the Motera Neo with a Shimano motor, 140, 150 mil, uh, 23 kilos, under 4,000 euros. That's a pretty nice. good bike, Chris. It's a pretty hot bike. I think, you know, we've seen Bryce Lind and those 50 to 1 guys chucking those bikes around. Looks like Josh is having an absolutely amazing time on it. I think that's got to be hot. I think that's a hot one. That's a hot one. And I think so too is this next one, C for yep. Canyon, the new Canyon Spectral on with the integrated battery now and um, a great range of bikes there. You know, a, a good sort of uh, range of price points as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good value, isn't there, on those bikes? And I think it's definitely smartening them up with that integrated battery, carbon front triangle on those high-end bikes. You know, it's good stuff coming from those guys. Uh, definitely hot there, I think. And I'm looking yeah. for, I'm looking forward to our next adventures on those bikes, Chris. Uh, it'd, be nice, be, it'd be nice to see you again. I know, I'm missing you, Steve. Crikey, I tell you, I tell you what I'm missing as well is uh, looking at this Forestal Sirion bike. Now that, I mean, it, when we talk innovation, this has got to be near the top of the list, I think. It's got to be up there, hasn't it, I think? Yes, 17.4 sure. kilograms, uh, 60 Newton meters of torque. Uh, apparently it's a silent motor uh, from the Eon Drive. And Yeah, I was looking at that motor. It's got um, titanium parts for like the higher wear items or housed in a magnesium shell. It sounds more like a, you know, a high-end chocolate to me. <laughs> a high-end chocolate, uh, 700 watt-hour battery, and uh, yeah, well, as I say, we're looking forward to uh, seeing more of that bike this year. So definitely a hot one. Now, um, yeah, no, no, nice. now, uh, Chris, our new high bikes, our new high bikes, they're hot. I've been loving mine. You know, with that new Bosch motor is, you know, I think the looks are again. You know, you either love it or hate it. But for me, I love that bike and I love the way it rides. It's you know, it's one of my top bikes for sure. That's controversial because I really like the look of my bike. Maybe it's the, yeah. maybe it's the colour. I mean, mine's in black and yellow, and I've got like yeah. got yellow shoes to match. Got yellow decals yeah. on it. Yeah, for me, it's a hot bike, and you know, it's an all aluminium chassis. It's aluminium wheels. It's and you know, I think I think it's four thousand six hundred euro, euros. So again, that's a kind of a, a reasonable amount of money to be spending on an e-mountain bike. So uh, we if we've got to say hot, haven't we? We've got to say hot. Definitely hot. Definitely hot for those for sure. What about the uh, Lapier Overvolt then? You know, what we see Nico riding, the GLP. What do you think of that range of bikes? Yes, now obviously the French company have uh, been spending a lot of time develop developing their e-mounted bikes, obviously uh, with the help of the one of the greatest downhill racers of all time, Nico Vulios. And yeah, it's not only the GLP bike with the centrally located battery, but also the e Zesty, which has got a new update on it. So that's, that's two yeah. different kinds of e-bikes there from the French. And uh, 
I gotta say, I think they're both hot bikes. I think they're definitely hot. Yeah, so I think with that Ease ST having the software update and pumping a bit of uh, more power out the motor, then that's definitely moved into hot category for me. Now, uh, meanwhile, Merida, we, uh, we had a ride on the Merida out in Spain about 12 months ago. Now, they've come out recently with the limited version of the E160. Uh, again, around yeah. about 4,000 euros. Now, I've been fortunate enough to have ridden this bike, and we have actually got a feature coming out on it on the channel in the next few weeks. Uh, and I can tell you, it's a really lively bike. And uh, again, Shimano E8000 motor and a good range of prices. Actually, not a good range of prices. It's actually one price, isn't it? It's limited. It's limited in spec and it's limited limited in in the price so uh yeah and we see so many people of those don't we you know in the bike vault that's probably one of the most common bikes so yeah it's got to be hot now look this is on the on the boundary of 2019 2020 but we've got to put this bike in it's the mondrica crafty carbon under 20 kilos with the fourth generation bosch motor crazy isn't it having that weight with that powered bike you know i think that's the direction we need to be heading i think we've come close with the levo sl and things like that but a high powered bike weighing in at under 20 kilos and that's you know that's a 160 150 mil bike with 29 inch wheels so uh go on chris hot or not super hot for me that that is yeah stunning bike love that bike Right. Now then, meanwhile, moving across the Atlantic Ocean to Canada, Norco came out with the Site VLT29 recently, um, obviously ridden by Bryn Atkinson and Jill Kintner. Uh, it'd be cool to catch up with those guys uh, in the next few weeks, certainly. I've seen they've been riding them. Swiftly moving on to the Knox with the... Now, how do, how do you pronounce that motor? Is it Sax? Is it... Sash, I always say. Sash. I don't know if that's right. You know me and my pronunciation, Steve. Zax, maybe it's Zax. It's from Germany. Anyway, it's a new motor, and um, the cat is going a bit crazy in the house. I have to tell you, uh, it's it's it, you know it's one of the first bikes to feature that motor, and I'm sure we'll be seeing more from the Germans uh, in the future. I think it's I'm, I'm in the balance about that bike. I think. I think I think we're going to see ex exciting stuff coming from Knox. I think you know with these new motors, new designs. I think that's a pretty exciting brand for me. So. I'm going to nudge it to hot for me personally, I think. Now then, this I think is hot. It's from Italy and it's called the Olympia. It's uh, the EX9000 and it's got, oh sorry, EX900 and would, surprise, surprise, it's got a 900 watt hour battery and uh, 85 newton meters of torque from this new Oli Sport Drive, which is said to be uh, really quite quiet. I mean, Chris, I'm, this, this, is, this is big news, I think, from Italy. Definitely, yeah. I think, you know, we've got all those uh, new exciting motors coming into the game. It's going to change things up. You know, I think, yeah, it looks like an exciting brand to me. And 900 watt hours, oof, that's game changing. It is. It's pretty big, isn't it? Uh, now, we saw this bike uh, over in uh, Riva del Garda last year, the Propane e Cano. Again, it's a gravity oriented bike, uh, yeah. a mix of 29, uh, 27.5 wheels, 23 kilos, 165 mil travel. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, a really nice looking bike. But I think, Chris, the Radon Render. I mean, come Ooh, on. Yeah. This, this is yeah. like full-on electric SRAM, you know, you've got the SRAM access group set on there, you know, that price, but whoa. And I mean, the geometry as well, 458 millimeter, millimeter chain stay on it, 23 kilos, and that price, you know, with all that kit. So what we're talking is 6,500 euros for a bike with full SRAM access uh, kit on it. It's crazy. And I, I, what I've noticed about the bike, Chris, is that it's got a 458 mil chainstay. So it's quite a long yeah. chainstay on that bike. So yeah. the guys at Radon, they were maybe a little bit late to the game, but obviously they seem to know what they do when it comes to geometry yeah. on their bikes. Definitely. Well, you can, yeah, it's set an attractive price. And, you know, that geometry looks pretty exciting on that as well. And the weight, yeah, crazy. Hot, hot, hot. Well, talking about weight, Levo SL, that was launched in January. Uh, brings me memories back to South Africa when I was in a in a tent for five days with a raging flu. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely one of the, you know, one of the highlights of the year, certainly, right? Definitely, yeah, I think it's just a bit of a game changer, that bike, isn't it? It's slotting in between the e-mountain e bikes and standard mountain bikes. And, you know, we've seen a lot of people going out on those bikes, doing big rides and getting into the e-bike game, you know? So yeah, I think that is a definite hot bike. Don't you love looking at bikes? We love looking at bikes all day long, Steve, that's all we do. Okay, well, well, what are your thoughts on the new TOC TX01? TikTok, uh, TikTok. 180, 170 mil. Um, yeah. Now, it's obviously a gravity orientated bike here with Olin suspension, but a 1.8 inch head tube. Thoughts on that? 
Sounds like a bit of a beam can on the front of that bike then. What's that? For, just make it super stiff, is it? I take it. I don't know. But what, what's your thoughts about the wings on it as well? I don't know about that. I've seen, well, I've seen Tony Bow riding these bikes as well, so perhaps that explains all that, the wings on it to get him to do his crazy stuff. But it's a, it's a good looking bike, that. You know, I think you know, a heavy hitting bike is a pretty good alternative to some of the other heavy hitters out there, so that's got to be hot. So, Stefano, we love your bike. We love your bike, Stefano, from Italy. Uh, now, this has really, really grabbed my attention. It's the Thomas Light Rider with a 740 watt hour battery, weighing in at 18.5 kilos. Now, I think the graphics on the red bike are well, I actually think they're pretty hideous. However, if you look at the E2, it is super stealth, has great chainsaw length on it, and I think that is a super cool looking bike. Really, it really is like it. It's a nice it. looking bike. And I mean, 740 watt hours, 18 and a half kilos, that's pretty mental as well, isn't it? That is a nice looking bike. And, and as we mentioned, we were doing this in alphabetical order. So uh, Y is obviously for YT and the new range of decoy uh, bikes. Now, hopefully, hopefully you saw our um, build and ride the, the YT decoy, which came out uh, on the weekend. And also Doddy did a really cool video, which, which shows you how to really get into the detail and how to fine tune that bike once you built it up out of the box. So um, those are our 2020 or 20 from 2020. Let us know which are your favorite ones. Uh, Chris, have you got a favorite? I really like that Thomas. I really like that Thomas. I don't know, I'm loving my high bike at the minute, Steve. That's gotta be the highlight for me, I think this year out of all those. Okay, time for the news this week. Uh, actually, before we go into the news, Chris, I'm thinking 900 watt hours. You could almost ride that back from Italy at that amount of battery capacity, couldn't you? <laughs> Pretty much. Imagine having one in your backpack as well. You could probably go to the moon. <laughs> now then, what's been going on in the e-mountain bike world this week? Well, uh, I've seen on Instagram. Now, Chris, I've seen you've written this guy's name. I've, I can't pronounce his name. What is it? Oh, Bienvi, Bienvi Aguido. Yeah, he's one of the slope style guys. So you probably haven't seen him out and about, Steve, but yeah, he's a crazy rider. He's doing cliffhanger backflips and things like that. Fest series is an absolute wild man. And I think to have this guy on board on the e-bike scene is pretty cool. And I seen he's out and about and his uh, decoy getting pretty wild. And uh, yeah, good stuff coming from that. I'm super excited to see him pushing the limits on his e-bike. Now, we had uh, how to build an e-mounted bike trail recently, and you might have seen yeah. Teetotal Terry. Well, this week he's been busy again in the woods uh, and he's given us a sneak peek into his trail tools. Ah, forgot to mention my trail building tools. Yeah. Yeah. I've got my rake. That's for raking leaves and things. I've got my shovel. Foldable. For the ease of use, foldable saw, and then the piece of resistance. Chainsaw, and chainsaw, very, very useful. You know, fallen trees across the trail, stopping the deer and all the nice walking for going through. No problem, Tito Lutzeri, fitness fanatic, e-bike guru, to the rescue. Now, I saw this clip on Instagram, Steve, and if anyone is wondering how waterproof e-bikes are, you know, a Santa Cruz Heckler and a Shimano E8000, well, Danny Mac has definitely got the answer here. I mean, look at this nose roll back down there, you know, riding through that river, backwards nose roll down that dam, into the river again, then powering up there is absolutely insane. And I think every day I see Danny putting e-bike clips up on Instagram, and it is blowing my mind what he can do on that bike. It's absolutely insane. Danny McCaskill, I'm not sure that's responsible behaviour on an e-mountain bike in the rivers of Scotland, but uh, what I was super impressed with it was the way he went up that damn wall and hopped up onto the step on the top, it was like three foot high. I mean, that's, that's tricky stuff to do, right? Yeah, it's pretty insane. You know, we don't know how heavy those bikes are and Danny just throwing it around like that is blowing my mind, to be fair, at the minute. Coming up this week on EMBM, we have got an amazing week of content and kicking it off on Friday, we have one obstacle, five skills. Now this is a video all about that stuff you ride past at the side of the trail. You can actually session it with a load of skills just simply on one obstacle, so be sure to check that one out. And I hear you got something pretty exciting coming on Sunday, right Steve? I've just had an idea. How about five obstacles, one skill for the next video? That could be one, couldn't it? You've got your name all over that one. 
Tell me more about this DIY e-bike anyway. On Sunday, we have got Ray, Ray Cook, the e-bike boffin, building an e-bike for under 200 pounds from scratch. It is a video you simply cannot miss. And it's a two-parter, and the second part comes out on Monday. Now, last week's show, we discussed, do you actually need a display on your e-mountain bike? And we had a load of comments, some great ones. Uh, this is from WXOLF. Uh, I just use a watch. It runs Strava, Heartbeat, and Maps Rides and Stats. Then I ride a Specialized with no display. I prefer to enjoy the ride and have a break from the tech that's in my everyday life. Well, fair news. Uh, before I bought an e-bike, I thought I would need one. However, now I realize that I don't. Having that break from the everyday tech, I totally agree with that. You know, just get on with the ride, you know, keeps it away from the computers and your iPads and things like that. So that's pretty cool. We've got Vo Voni P. Keox is brilliant. Nice Gorilla Glass, tough screen, good for info and stats, links to your heart rate, and the smartphone provides GPS and links to the web portal. It also clips, so works as a key. So yeah, I forgot about that with that. It's pretty cool. If your bike gets stolen, you actually need that device to start the bike. So yeah, good point. Yeah, actually, I, I met up with the Bosch guys this week and uh, I got a new Keox display for my new high, high bike, Chris. Ah, oh, damn, I want one of those. We need to get one in the post to you, I think, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, charge ride repeat, a regular visitor to EMBN. Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, not interested. I just got out and have fun in turbo all the way. I know the battery will last three hours. I set off back to the van. I set off back to the van after two and a half hours. That yeah, was a good way. I think once you get in tune with your e-bike, you will know how long it lasts and the type of riding you're doing. But I think as a beginner, when you first kick off, then you might need that info to get that knowledgeable in the first place, I think. It's a nice mindset. Nice mindset. So this is uh, Rob from the Gold Coast, Australia, and he's built a custom Reader E160. Talk us through the details, Chris. Yeah, so this is pretty interesting, I think. This has got a 4.8 rear tire on it, so it's amazing for climbing and you know shock absorption. It's got a three inch front tire on there. And what I like about this is he's got that 14 speed roll off rear hub in there. So as you know, with the e-bikes and stuff, you get quite a lot of wear going on with the cassette and chain. So he's got a roll off hub in there, um, which I think is an amazing idea. And Rob is saying, this is my new build for exploring West Coast Tasmania, where the terrain is beaches, soft sand tracks, and rocky headlands. This thing handles really well, steers, jumps, and absorbs big, hit, uh, big hits brilliantly, even on full-on black runs. It's also a great trials bike with a roll-off super low gear. It climbs slabs with ease, and he stuck one, uh, 155 mil cranks on there, and that's two 500 watt hour batteries. So I'm loving the look of that. You know, it's got that moto style, you know, got a big rear tire on there, smaller front tire, with those big, almost fat bike tires, and that roll-off hub. Chris, I'm, I'm, think just, thinking, I'm just thinking of the size. Like a bang I mean, on bike. I'm just thinking about the size of that tire. I mean, 4.8 inches. It's, um, it's about, yeah, it's a big tire, isn't it? That to fit on the front of a bike. It is, I'm surprised it fits in the, in the frame, to be fair. You know, it must have some good mud clearance on it, that bike. Right, it's time for getting out and about. However, before starting with this section, uh, I've just been pulled up about my 4.8 uh, measurements, and uh, we're looking at this much. That much, right? I mean, it wasn't quite what I thought, which was sort of about <laughs> that much. You're exaggerating again, Steve. You're good at that, I hear. Let's let's know your thoughts in the comments down below. Anyhow, out and about. Uh, a bit of free ride action here, kicking things off. Um, Timothy shredding the shale banks of Alaska on his Canevo with Pilot the dog and getting uh, his front uh, in, getting into his front wheeler. Oh, Pilot, get down, Pilot, get down, Pilot. Imagine that, you know, dropping into that bank and the dog goes in the front wheel. It's pretty close, but that's a nice bit of action there. Next up, this is Valentin in his new EMBN jersey, which is available on the online shop if you if you know if you fancy one of those with loads of other cool kit as well. Check that out. But he's been out on his Cube Hybrid in Bavaria, putting the miles in. Nice. We've actually got some new t-shirts coming as well in the next month right. or so. Some really nice yeah. new EMBN t-shirt colors coming out. Uh, now, moving south to uh, Sintra in Portugal. Wow, what a place. Uh, Jose along the coast here on his Cube Hybrid 140. F 140? 140. 140. <laughs> Enjoying some time on my Furiosa. And last but not least on Out and About, we have uh, Evgeny who is riding out on the southwest side of Tenerife Island. 
Uh, two seconds, let me think. Southwest side, the uh, southwest. All right, down there, that is like, um, wow, is there much riding down there? Well, anyhow, anyhow, uh, he's on his new high bike and is shocked by the performance, says it's absolutely amazing. Um, well, I'd love to uh, go riding there. I have actually ridden on Mount Tiede and in that area. I want to get out there. It looks like free ride action. That shell down those. Are you allowed to ride those? Is it a volcano, I take it? It's uh, it's a site of special scientific interest, Chris. You cannot go riding e-bikes up the volcano, but there is a bike park in the top right-hand corner uh, of Tenerife, and it's got a really nice cafe nearby. Right, Steve, it is time for my favorite part of the show. I don't know about you, but I love seeing everyone's bikes from all over the world. It is the bike vault, and let's kick it off. First up is Libor. He's traded in his KTM motorbike for his trusty Kinevo. He's out for a ride in the Alps, hasn't had a single issue with this bike in two years. Absolutely love it, and we absolutely love that shot too. That is kicking it off super nice. Nice, yeah. Hey, what are you having for tea tonight? Tea? I don't know. I have no idea at the minute. What are you having for tea? We're having duck. Duck? Ah. Oh. You see, these are the kind of things we don't talk about if we were side by side in the studio. Yeah. I know, I know. Looking forward to those days again. Looking forward to those days. Anyhow, getting carried away there. Next up is Charles, who has lost two stone since getting his YT decoy. Uh, he's riding up at Gisborne Forest and uh, is about to drop into Hullies. That's nice, that is. That is nice. And what about John? What about John here, who's been out for his first ride on his Merida E160, smashed out 40,000? What? Oh, sorry, 40K. What was that? Oh, it's the coffee. And only used two bars from his battery. Super impressed. Wow, that looks like a good riding spot. That is nice, Chris. Nice. Well, we've got another YT decoy here, and this belongs to Stephen. He's out shredding in Cambridge, but not Cambridge over here. It's Cambridge in New York, testing out his new forks and his new brakes. That is a nice shot. Yeah. And someone else enjoying the trails of Gisborne Forest is James, and he's on his 2019 Levo, getting back to the trails after lockdown. That's nice. Nice. Oh, this is close to you, Steve. This is Nathan, and he's been out on his new Levo SL on the borders of England and Wales, riding alongside the River Seven there, I think. 22 miles with 77% battery left. That's super nice. And what I want to know is, can you ride down those banks to the River Seven by the old bridge? It looks like you can from the road, Steve. You might know. Well, funny you should say that. I was actually going to in try to get you to come on a photo shoot to do that many years ago. Did I discuss really? it with you? Yeah. No, I've driven past it many times, and I think, yeah, it definitely looks on. And you've got a nice soft landing if you go over the handlebars off the cliff Let's onto the beach. Let's revisit that. Let's get Chris Smith free riding again. <laughs> now, uh, now, a really nice stealth-looking Rocky Mountain power play here. Uh, this belongs to Martin, who's out for a big ride on the Norfolk coast near Brancaster. Super nice, that shot. Super nice. Super nice. Wow, this is cool as well. This is 65-year-old Robert from Quebec in Canada. He's been loving his giant trance. He been able to get out with three uh, rides three times further than he could before on his old mountain bike. Loving the e-bike life, and we are loving that. That is a super nice. Quick geography question, Chris. Where's Quebec? East or west coast? Uh, east coast. Ooh, check you out. What about Paul then? What about Paul here? What about Paul out and about in Kentmere in the Lake District uh, on his new Orbea Wild FS? Uh, he's got a range extender on there offering 1,125 watt hours of battery. Huge rides and a fantastic place, Kentmere. Beautiful. Nice. Nice. Well, it's time for Bike of the Week, Steve. And what are you thinking? I mean, there's some pretty strong entries this week. Uh, what about Libor and his trusty Kinevo? Thing that takes it, doesn't it? Nice bike, stunning location, great shot. <laughs> but keep those shots coming into us here on EMBN. Use the upload service. It could be you taking bike of the week. And that's it from this week's EMBN show. Let us know what you think about all those really cool looking bikes from the first part of 2020. Uh, Chris, great to catch up with you. Looking forward to those yeah, and you, Steve. Looking forward to those days where we can be we can be side by side again, discussing dinner and stuff like that. I know, talking about bikes, looking at pictures of e-bikes. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN. Make sure you find and give us a follow on social media too. Cheers, guys. Bye bye.